I think we'll uh, move on to, uh, in those conditions where we when we couldn't seal the macular hole. So we'll have this innovative technique. We will learn from this technique from a Rupa Kanti Vishas about how to do this grafting in these failed macular holes. So Dr. Anirudh has described the all all type of you know uh, primary hole surgery, but even after that, also nightmare comes Absolutely. when you know uh, you don't have a complete success rate. So then uh, I always prefer to tell them that it is not the end of your mm -hmm. you know thinking process, or pr probably that is the beginning of you can think in a different way. So this is a, a pre-recorded surgery, so I'll just play it off. Audio? So uh, I'll just keep on talking. Nahi aa hai audio. So I'll just uh, talk. Uh, so once you do a, like a standard peeling technique in, in, in a uh, in a as a, as a, as a standard uh, macular hole surgery but you can you can land up of having this is pre op and post op so this much of having so when when you have uh, you know a larger size of the hole you always plan for you know pre operatively you always plan for this uh, inverse flap technique or envelope technique but when you don't w you have peeled enough uh, you know that you have done so you don't have uh, any other option other than you know doing this free flap and putting into there so now the question comes if you put only this free flap into that non closed <laughs> hole so what is the you know utility of putting that flap is there so it causes fibrosis only on that uh, that area so and then sboct shows that there is an only scar is remaining so we thought of you know why not to put instead of putting the ilm itself ilm cannot regenerate the retina as at that area so why not to put the retina per se into that hole and see ki what is happening there so for that we have devised a kind of a retinal trephine and then we preoperatively we measured the size of the macular hole failed macular hole and then predetermined the size of that and harvested a autologous retinal graft just above the uh, you know so, uh, above this arcade and freed it with the help of a forceps and scissor and then this part is being done under saline and then you do the fluid air exchange you can very well see the graft is uh, you know round shaped graft is there and you do the fluid air exchange with other hand and then place the graft there over that macular area and simply tuck it with your silicon tipped uh, cannula now the question here the now the main trick is here is you don't you know open your uh, when you are doing it off you don't open your uh, you know uh, port in that area so that otherwise this, this flap will come up so and then donor site has been lasered successfully the rest of the part of the fluid has been taken out now yes you have done the surgery successfully now what why you, whether the retina has been closed or the this hole has been i mean the hole has been closed properly yeah so yes this is the success rate what you can see and you can see the earlier i have shown this is a scar tissue but here the, the retinal architecture here is somewhat similar to uh, the other part of the retina so that is that is so whether this is an anatomical success to know the uh, uh, success of this kind of cases we did multifocal ERG and we have seen there's this much of spike what we are seeing in the macular area as well and same time we did uh, 10-2 Central 10 2 because we don't have any uh, uh, microperimetry. So, when we have seen this, these results are 25 to 26, 27, which is pretty good in the central macular area as well. So, this is a uh, old record of almost near about uh, uh, two years back. So, we have almost reached around 16 cases as of now. So, all of them are having initial phases. We also had a learning curve, and then we had a initial graft, graft uh, uh, loss and uh, sub uh, retinal migration of the graft initial stages but then when you realize that your graft size was not adequate and you increase the graft size of around 15 percent of what you got is an initial phase and then the success rate becomes absolutely almost 100 percent success rate so there are different uh, surgeons have also tried of doing an autologous retinal transplant but here the main difference is that the autologous retinal transplant was putting the the graft over this over this area 
which is bigger size of the of the uh, hole so but compared to this this is uh, here we are putting the exact size of the hole putting the hypothesis that there is an aberrant regeneration takes place when the two cut nerve end comes together so that's how is probably the uh, uh, this is the reason that the central area other than the anatomical success this functional ability comes back so and we are not using any viscoelastic agent and not no pfcl so that you know there is no hindrance between those two cut end there is no substance in between and if you see this is this is a normal uh, mfrg this is a uh, mfrg in a classically classic ilm peeling technique and closed macula hole and this is ilm spree flap has been put it here and this is your graft so if you see them in 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 one place so this is a normal one this is a classic peeling there is a repeeling and ilm plugging and this is the grafting that's what has been seen in 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 one flap so uh, this is the collage of different cases of doing the similar kind of surgery i uh, know this is a uh, this is a probably not the beginning there's a lot of people are doing this autologous retinal transplant in different part of the world and uh, you know probably the autologous retinal transplant can give us the solution of lot of uh, diseases where there is exactly the tissue loss of the retina this is this can be the way forward for the next generation thank you thank you dr bishesh uh, uh, do you have any questions from the audience uh, dr bowel have a question here uh, i did a uh, few of my cases autologous retinal graft in uh, seven eight cases uh, where i uh, just uh, in a vitrectomized dye so i first demarcate do the demarcation uh, with the laser in the supranasal quadrant to avoid the postoperative ear information first of all second is uh, i am just injecting the subretinal bss just to make a blob like elevation in using cautery to separate this uh, before that i am putting my putting pfcl uh, up to beyond the uh, this harvesting area donor site then uh, using the splenesis x loop without holding the tissue with the forcep and under the pfcl with the splenesis loop nicely in a controlled manner you can just shift the graft to the macular area and do direct select uh, this uh, air uh, pfcl uh, then do starting doing the fg removing all the fluid surrounding the pfcl bubble because it is a convex bubble and doing direct silicon oil pfcl exchange on the sunless side so this Why is not my gas? gas you can put but uh, oil the success rate is maybe uh, high that's why theoretically gas should work much better than oil yes but uh, sometimes the like a patient may not cannot do the prone position that's why the primary failure had happened yeah I, so i, I think you, you have done all uh, the cases yeah. with gas yes yeah, so that is the main reason no yes. pfcl no viscoelastic agent mm. over that area mm -hmm. so the idea is to there should not be any material coming into between the two cut end so that's why you it is it is uh, basically that's what we, what uh, we uh, uh, wanted to look for uh, basically in the year 2014 15 at that time also you have also started this technique so uh, dr uh, tamil mehmood and dr uh, dilraj gewal both of them they did that in a two stage manner they used make the uh, whole uh, vitreous cavity full of pfcl and after two weeks they are removing the pfcl injecting silicon oil again they are removal of silicon oil that is a three stage procedure uh, you are telling it a single stage my is two stage yeah dr bishesh uh, uh, do you have a adjustable trephine how do you uh, do you have a pre op measurement you have a series of different sizes of trephine adjustable trephine the main dif difficulty is that so if you need to do a trephination then you cannot have a sprong so adjustable trephine you will have a different sprongs which will can you know simply open up like this but the problem is that once you open up then the gap comes in between and once you have the gap you cannot rotate it like this and have an you know proper you know cut so that is the reason that you cannot have a sprong like this otherwise yes you can try we have tried doing a, a you know this kind of sprong also but it it does not give a that kind of a smooth cut like how you get it up with this uh, no, continuous trephine i think very nice videos uh, we'll uh, move to the second uh, second uh, next talk with dr shubhendu boral dr shubhendu you have so most importantly this video got the asrs based video error also uvs in a based video error 
yes, yes, yes. First prize, huh? Is it coming? So I think excellent technique uh, in excellent hands. Uh, so <laughs> we'll so have Trifine, uh, the the invention of Trifine is I think it has got the patent also, no? It's going on. It's going <laughs> on. It will take five years time. It's India. <laughs>